day we're on the Oregon trip. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Angling Attic Pacific Northwest. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite techniques, one that seems to be uh, growing in popularity around here, and that is bead fishing. Now, whether you're fishing hard beads, fishing soft beads, uh, in this video today we're going to show you guys how to get these set up so you guys can get a chance to get out here this winter and hopefully uh, chase down some uh, winter steelhead. So the rain is starting to fall out here, so let's head inside and uh, get this rig tied up. All right, you guys, here we are inside. Out of the wind, the rain, the cold, I've got some coffee going here. Uh, now, first things first, this is just gonna be one of the ways that you can do up this rig. There's a variety of different ways you can do it, but we're gonna show you basically the bare minimum of what you need to be able to go out there and uh, start fishing this rig, and we'll show you a couple different options along the way. So with that, uh, the first thing we're gonna be talking about was rods and reels. And if you don't have this exact kind of stuff you guys don't worry about running out and trying to buy new things what I would recommend is using what you have and try this technique out and if it's something that you like and then maybe go out and invest in a longer rod and a bigger reel or something like that uh, but yes I'm not a, I'm not one to uh, go out and spend a lot of money on something until I've started to learn that technique and uh, even still I don't want to go spend a fortune on fishing gear so what we've got here is a couple options uh, I'm a big fan of Lama Glass. They are a local company here up in Washington. <clears throat> but this is a bait casting setup, and this is the Lama Glass uh, Red Line. That's a 9 foot 4 rod, and it's rated for 8 to 12 pound line. And it's actually a really good rod. I had a lot of success with it last year, and I would be using it more this year, but I'm going to kind of give the bait caster uh, a little bit of a, a break. And so I ended up picking up another. I've got a few in my arsenal over here. A Lama Glass X11. Now this one's nine foot six, also rated for eight to 12 pound line. And this is the uh, spin, float, and drift uh, rod. It's a really good rod. And this one is actually under $100. And so being able to get a good quality rod at an affordable price is huge. So what I've been pairing these up with, and you guys, if you've been following the channel and seeing the videos, uh, I use these Fluger President reels quite a bit. Uh, I've been really happy with them. And again, it's something that's not going to break the bank. In fact, I just picked them up from down the road at Bymart here. Uh, and again, I abuse my stuff. And so uh, anything that I've been able to hang on to longer than a year uh, says a lot about that product. So Akuma's got a bunch of uh, product out there as well. I'm also a big fan of Akuma. This is a Stratus. This is just a nice reel that... Uh, nice and smooth and again it's not going to break the bank so that's just going to be a couple of options for you guys and just kind of a uh, a general starter for this setup and so let's uh, move on from here and we'll start talking about uh, what it is that you need and then also those options uh, for setting up this rig all right you guys the first things we're going to end up using to get set up on this rig are going to be a bobber bobber stop and uh, two little four mil beads and so I've got three different uh, bobbers right here, and there's really no rhyme or reason to why it is I choose which bobber on any given day. Uh, really, when it, for me, it just comes down to which is gonna be the correct size for the weight that I'm gonna need to be adding on to uh, properly fish this rig. So uh, there's a couple of bobbers there. Now, when we're talking about bobber stops, you guys, uh, there's actually some that you can buy on your own uh, they come standalone in a pack with quite a few of them in there, but these also come with the soft beads. You can use those to uh, as a bobber stop, and it works very well. Uh, here we've got the typical string one that a lot of you guys have probably seen before, and really the only problem I have with these is when you've got your rig tied up and that knot just seems to not want to work anymore, and it's constantly sliding, and you're having to uh, constantly correct your, uh, your bobber stop and your depth and all that. So with that, we've also got two little four mil beads. Now, all bobbers aren't the same on the top of them, so you might have different size holes. So there might be times when uh, you slip down a four mil bead and you find that it actually slides into the bobber and that's not something you want. So if you need to switch up to a five mil or something like that, you can go ahead and do so. Uh, now you can go buy these uh, 
beads at the store as well. They usually do come with these bobber stops, but you can also get those beads at a, uh, like a little craft store or something like that. And you can actually get a lot of them for uh, really cheap. So uh, then we're gonna end up using a three-way swivel. I'll show you guys here. And that's where we're gonna be attaching uh, our weight to also our braided line and our leader, which is gonna be coming down. Uh, now there's a bunch of different styles of weights. Before this, we're gonna be using these Dragon Balls by uh, P-Line. It's a great product. And uh, there's a bunch of them out there, what we'll probably end up showing you guys at the end of this. Granted, we've got some time. Uh, some different options. Uh, you can use a, uh, there's a, like a hollow core lead. We can use a solid lead. Uh, there's also the uh, little slinky weights that can go on there. Uh, if you wanted to not use your three-way swivel, you could end up going with an inline weight. But for this, we're going to be using the uh, three-way swivel. And then, as I said, we'll come back to those uh, if we have time at the end of this video. So, uh, obviously, we're going to be using a bead. So, as I mentioned, we're using a 10-mil uh, plastic bead right here. And to peg that, um, you'll see a bunch of different products at the store. Uh, and there's different, I guess I would call them hacks, uh, where people will use a toothpick, rubber bands, things like this to uh, peg your bead. And I'm a firm believer in just using the product that you find at the store because it's, I mean, it gets the job done. And especially if you guys are just now learning this technique, uh, just buying the product that was made specifically for doing this uh, is what I would recommend. Uh, and then lastly, uh, besides our leader, we're ended up needing some hooks. So what I've got here is two different sizes, which are typically, typically going to be what you're going to use when you're fishing, uh, say, in between like a 6 mil uh, up to like maybe a 14 or something like that. And that's going to be a size 2 and a size 4. And these are great hooks. They don't cost a whole lot of money. <clears throat> and again, but uh, when it comes to hooks, you guys, I wouldn't mind, I don't mind spending a little bit of money knowing something that I'm, that I'm getting is going to be a good quality product that is going to hold that sharp edge longer because that's going to be crucial when it comes time to uh, hooking up a fish. So lastly, uh, leader. Now, uh, typically when I'm fishing for uh, salmon, I'm out there and I'm throwing a 20-pound uh, fluorocarbon. This is some stuff that I really like by Seaguar. But being that steelhead are a bit more shy or line shy than uh, their counterpart, the salmon, we're going to need to uh, drop it down a little bit. And so... Usually when I'm fishing, when I'm out here doing winter steelhead is in between an eight and a 15 pound, uh, very seldomly do I actually jump down to that eight pound. Uh, so uh, there's a few, well, quite a few, again, quite a few products out there of different types of fluorocarbon and different lines that are out there. And this is a Berkeley Vanish line that I've been happy with. It's a 10 pound, you get 110 yards on it. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money. And again, if you're just starting out, uh, I don't recommend going out and buying the most expensive thing. Just kind of go out and find a, a fluorocarbon and uh, go with that. And if you can get maybe kind of a variety of sizes, that would be great because really depending on the conditions, it's going to kind of dictate whether you're going to be using a, a smaller presentation, smaller line, and uh, actually then we might swap it up and be able to use something a bit bigger, heavier, and bulkier, say like a 15 to 17 pound. So that's going to do it for that. So let's, uh, let's start showing you guys how we can get this rig set up uh, top to bottom. So we're going to start out getting the, uh, the bobber stop, the bobber and the beads on there. All right, now coming from our rod tip over here, we've got our braided line. And uh, I didn't mention it, so what I do like to use is this high viz it's this Power Pro. It's a great line to use. And using that high viz is a good idea because then you're able to see your line on the water and see what it's doing, which will make it easier for you to uh, manipulate and mend your line and uh, fish this rig more correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out here with our bobber stop. Now, I'm only going to mention this because I've seen, <laughs> I've seen it a time or two, and some of you guys that have been around might have seen it a time or two as well, to where somebody slides this bobber stop on and they uh, just leave that plastic tubing on there as well. And then, hey, why doesn't my bobber stop work? So we're actually gonna show you guys here. We'll slide this on. So coming from the end of our line, we're gonna take, slide that through our little straw. We're gonna slide it up the line. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is grab on to the uh, bobber stop there. And with our other hand here, we're gonna pull this tubing off our line down 
and make sure that it is fully coming off. So what you can do now is slide that up your line and we'll tighten it up a little bit, but we're not gonna go very tight right now. We just kind of want it up out of our way. So for those that don't know, the bobber stop is what you're gonna use to adjust your depth and pretty much the depth that this rig is gonna be fishing uh, underwater. So now that we've got the bobber stop on, first thing we're gonna do next, first thing next, is we're gonna take one of our little uh, four mil beads and slide that guy on. And we'll slide that up the line, <clears throat> just out of the way again. Then from the top of the bobber going down, we're just gonna slide that through until it comes out the bottom. And again, move that up the line out of the way. We're gonna take our last little four mil bead. We're gonna thread that through. You guys know what I'm doing. I don't think you need to have the close up for that, right? All right, so we've got bobber stop, bead, bobber, and another little bead. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna take our three-way swivel and we're gonna tie that on. So as you can see on these three-way swivels, it's got a uh, eyelet on either side and then we've got our little hang down right there. So what I like to use uh, is a, uh, a uni knot when I tie this. So uh, whatever I, what I always say, I guess, when I'm recommending uh, how to tie up specific rigs is to use the knot that you know and that you trust and then that's the one that I would go with. Uh, I like the uni knot, and it's really one of the only times I tie this unless I'm doing a double uni to do my lines together, but uh, we'll actually show you guys how to do that knot right here. All right, so you're going to take your tag end and run it through your eyelet. Fold it back a bit here. Now we're going to need some extra line because this knot does take a little bit of uh, extra line. And so what we're going to do is now kind of fold it back, making a loop. And how I always uh, refer to it when I'm telling people how to tie this knot is you're essentially creating a nine. And so now that we've got that nine, that tag in that's hanging down, we're going to fold and wrap uh, back up around through that loop, going from the front around the back uh, towards yourself. And this tag in, when we're done, is going to be facing up the line. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through in between six to eight times. Grab that tag end with our one hand and then down here by the swivel, we're gonna grab the other. Now we're gonna to wanna to wet this knot before uh, we tighten it up. Wet and we're gonna pull on that tag end, pulling up our line as we're basically just holding this, uh, the swivel in place and you'll see the knot starting to close up on itself. Now that knot is nice and high up here. So what we can do now that it's up there is take that knot and uh, slide it down to our swivel, give it a nice little tug, make sure it's nice and tight, and then take the scissors and uh, cut off that tag end right there. So now we can tie on our leader. And when we're talking about leader, leader length, uh, you guys might wanna check the regulations in your area, depending on where you are, to make sure that you're not exceeding uh, a regulation limit there. So uh, what we're gonna wanna do is just get that other end tied on to the uh, other eyelet of our three-way swivel here. So what I usually do when we're tying this knot, you guys, is just go uh, with a simple clinch knot. So I think at this point, so now we've got our, our braid down to our three-way swivel, and then we've got our, our leader. We're not gonna put a weight on there yet, just so it's, for one, it's not in the way. And two, I usually don't tie or put on my weight until I've got to the area that I'm gonna be fishing and kind of see what the conditions are so I can then choose the size of the weight that I wanna use for those uh, conditions. All right, with our leader tied on, we're gonna take our bead. We're just gonna put the bead on, get it out of the way for right now, and we're gonna come back to that. So we'll just slide it, <laughs> slide it through the bead, put it on. All right, so when we're talking about hooks and number twos and number fours, uh, I use both of them. I'm usually fishing between a 10 and a 14 uh, millimeter bead when I'm out, uh, really not even dependent on the conditions. Those are just the sizes that I like to use. Uh, we'll touch on that here in a minute. So what we're gonna use and what I typically use when I'm fishing this setup and really just doing a, a hook to leader in general is just the improved clinch knot. So, so another thing that you can do instead of just doing this straight up knot like this is you can actually use the uh, bait loop or the egg loop and uh, use some yarn or whatever other kind of presentation that you want to put on there as long as it's not going to weight down uh, 
your whole rigging down here all too much. So at this point, now we can get our bead pegged. Now, since we're using these wedgies, uh, what we would have ordinarily done is maybe use one of those uh, little bead stop bobber, bobber stops and uh, slid that onto our line and just use that. But for this, we wanna have it pegged. So we're gonna take one of these little wedgie guys off of here. And these things are tapered. So fatter on one end and thinner on the other end. And so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna feed this through one of the sides of uh, the openings on our bead. <laughs> and I recommend going through the bottom with uh, the thin end and coming up through the bottom. And now what that's gonna do is when we pull it up through the bead, it's gonna pull that fatter end to the bottom, which is gonna help keep our bead from sliding down the line. So at this point, really right now, we can slide this in at any uh, spot that this bead is on the line and we'll adjust it once we get this wedgie through. So we feed it in one side. We're just gonna kind of pop it out onto this other side and you can kind of start to see it over here. And so once you kind of see a tip coming out the other side of the bead, you can grab onto that. We're gonna start pulling that through. And it's gonna get tighter the further you pull it. And we want this thing to be pretty snug so this thing doesn't move on our line. So once we've got it in a good spot, what we can do is cut off the remaining that's hanging out of the bead. Now you wanna cut this as close as you can because you wanna keep this bead looking as natural as you can. And then now what we can do is we can take that bead and we can slide it down our line. So how far is the question, uh, how far you wanna slide this thing down your line and how close to your hook uh, it actually is that you should be uh, kind of typical around here in the Pacific Northwest. We kind of go with the uh, two to three finger rule. So if you were to put your line down and put up three fingers, we've got about three fingers distance between the bead and the hook there. And there's a couple of reasons that that's done, but one of the main reasons that I like it <clears throat> is because a lot of times when the fish come up and they take your bead, when they open their mouth, there's more of a suction effect. And if you had a bead that was down towards the bottom of your hook, it would be easy to, once your bobber went down and you went for a hook set to maybe actually hit that hook into their gills or something like that. So in my opinion, this gives it a good standoffish distance uh, from the hook and so when the fish does take it and your bobber goes down and that line will get pulled nice and clean into the corner of the fish's mouth. So overall uh, just giving a nice good clean hook set which is probably going to hold your fish a lot better anyhow. So now we're going to get down to the weight portion of this. Now as I was telling you guys what we're going to end up using is uh, these P-line dragon balls which I showed you guys earlier. So all we're going to do is we're going to open up the clasp that is on our three-way swivel here, and we're just gonna slide that on, close that up, and there you go. And that thing will get the job done all day long. And uh, there are different types of weights because really it kind of depends on maybe what the bottom uh, of the river is like, whether you're fishing in a sandy area, if it's rocky, or if it's gonna have a bunch of snags. So trying to uh, cater the type of weight that you're using uh, to the river bottom uh, will help you uh, not only be successful in getting more strikes, but also as uh, keep you a lot safer from getting snags and losing your rig. So being that this is a fixed weight, there are a couple of different options uh, we'll touch on really quick. And uh, a couple of them I think are pretty cool and very cost effective considering uh, these are actually aren't too expensive, but with this type of rig and being that you're gonna be fishing along the bottom, it's gonna be really easy uh, to potentially snag up and lose gear. So if that's gonna be the case, obviously you're gonna wanna lose as little money uh, as possible. And so there's a couple things that are out there. Starting off with some of this solid lead here. So what we're gonna do is just unspool a little bit from on here. And this stuff's actually really easy, uh, obviously being lead, so it's gonna be easy to bend and pull out. So you're pretty much just gonna get to where your desired length is gonna be. Now, if you guys are new to this, you might not know exactly, you know, kind of uh, how much in weight you're cutting off and really is just kind of a guesstimate. So use your best judgment and uh, cut a section off of there. 
And with that section, what we're going to do is take those same cutters or pliers or whatever it is that you have, and you're going to want to crimp about the top half inch of that piece of lead. Now, once you've got that crimped down, it's going to give you a nice flat surface. And so the next step would be to get like a little nail or something and a hammer and just do a quick little punch through the lead there, uh, preferably up towards the edge or the top of it. So <clears throat> when you want to put it onto your swivel uh, clip, you're going to be able to get it on there and it's going to be able to fit on there nice and uh, be able to hang down freely. And this hollow core is actually one of my favorites here. So again, we're just going to unravel uh, a section and cut off our desired length. Now you'll see on either end of this piece that you just cut off that there's going to be a little hole. So what we're going to want to do here is take roughly, roughly about a two to four inch uh, piece of fishing line, maybe two to four pounds. And we're just going to put one end through the hole and we're going to fold that line in half and we're going to tuck that other tag end in that same exact hole, which is going to create a nice little loop at the top there with your fishing line. So you're going to want to have enough line down in that piece of lead that you can crimp uh, the top maybe half inch again. And then what that's going to do is pinch in that fishing line. And so now essentially what you've done is created a nice loop coming out of the top of that piece of lead. So you can take that loop and put that onto the clasp on your three-way swivel. And so what this is going to do is if you end up getting caught up on something down on the bottom, either it's going to break your line or that line is going to get pulled out of your uh, weight and freeing your gear and saving you money in the long run. Which is All right, you guys, now getting back to beads. Now, if we're talking about bead colors, there's a lot of options out there and a lot of different styles between hard beads, soft beads, uh, heavy beads. And there seems to be three colors that uh, seem to be favored by most fishermen. And that's going to be your pinks, your oranges, and your reds. Uh, now, I typically try and have a good uh, mix of different sizes and different colors out here because you never really can know what's going to work on any given day. When so, should you be throwing different sizes and different colors? And there's really no written rule to any of this. It's going to be one of those that really just comes down to fisherman preference because, you know, typically the general rule of thumb is is if you have low clear conditions, then to go and fish a smaller presentation. Now that I guess would be a good general thing to go by with this technique, but uh, there's plenty of people, myself included, that have gone out on a low clear day and have caught fish uh, with 14 millimeter. And I know some that have done it with 16 millimeters. So it's really just kind of a, a general guideline, not a, a written rule. But I guess if somebody were to ask me out of this variety of sizes of uh, beads that we have to choose from, if I were only able to choose one, what would it be? And I would have to go right there in the middle, 10 millimeter bead, regardless of the conditions, definitely one that I would choose. Uh, now, if it came down to color, I'm definitely a fan of pink. I've always been a fan of pink, the pink worm. Uh, pink always seems to work with uh, coho, steelhead, chinook, anything. Uh, pink's always just been a good go-to color for myself and a lot of people that I know. So those would be the, uh, the size that I would choose and the color that I would choose if I only had one choice to go out uh, to fish this rig specifically. So going with this two, three finger rule for uh, pegging your bead from your hook, there are different ways of doing it, as I had mentioned, and you can bring it all the way down to the bottom and have it sitting just above your hook, or and if you're doing a soft bead, you can put it on your hook. But if you're fishing these harder beads like this, uh, my recommendation would be to peg it or use one of those bead stops slash bobber stops and just kind of keep it at that same distance, uh, that standoffish distance from your hook there. But I guess if you did want to fish your uh, bead down a bit lower and actually have it sitting over the eyelet, you should probably think about bead to hook size ratio. And meaning as in with, if we're going to be fishing a number two hook and we've got a number 16 bead over the top of it, and it's a hard bead, uh, the general concept of how this rig works in the first place, I think it would be hard for a fish to get that bead in its mouth and then for you to successfully be able to get a good hook set because that bead that it's going or going through its mouth could be big enough that it's really just going to overtake that hook and you're probably going to miss a lot of hookups that way. So you definitely want to think about the bead to the uh, hook ratio so you can kind of avoid that and you know again preferably if you're just starting out with this setup uh, just peg it you guys and then try uh, experimenting as you become more experienced with the setup. 
All right, guys, so that'll basically cover like the, the basic setup to be able to get you guys out there on the water and fishing this rig. Now, again, I kind of recommend uh, just going with a product that is affordable to you. And, uh, and if you decide that this is a technique that you like and you want to get more into, uh, then obviously you can go from there and do that. But we are wrapping things up. And so I do want to cover really quickly uh, how to fish this rig and how you should approach uh, when you go out there and start making some of your very first casts with this. Now, coming back to our bobber stop, obviously the bobber stop is what adjusts the depth that this rig is going to be fishing. Now, most of you guys might know that steelhead water is typically two to six feet uh, of water, so you don't have a whole lot of adjustments that you need to, uh, to make, but you don't wanna go out there and make your very first cast and snag up, lose your gear, and start losing faith in this technique. And so, how I typically approach it, and you can do it one of two ways, is you can either set your bobber stop short and throw it out and if your bobber's still standing straight up in the water then you can reel it back in and you can go up a little bit higher so you can bring your rig further down in the water and what you're looking for is you want your weight to be hitting the bottom but you don't want your weight to be just dragging along the bottom and obviously your bobber is going to show you when you get strikes and uh, let you know that there's a fish on but you can also look at your bobber and be able to tell when this rig is actually fishing at the proper depth. And so what you're actually looking for is a little bit of a forward can candidness, I guess I would say to this. You wanna be candid forward a little bit. And every few seconds you wanna see this bump going on, which is gonna be telling you that this weight is back to you, just kind of bouncing off the bottom. And your bobber is gonna kind of show you that that's going on. And obviously what you're looking for is that bobber down. And so what you wanna be careful for when you're out there fishing this rig, that you don't have too much line out on the water. I've done it myself when I first started out and I've seen a lot of anglers do it, where they've got a bunch of line out there, they see their bobber go down and they instantly try and set the hook. But all you're really doing is ripping some of that slack uh, line off the top of the water. And by the time you uh, reach your pretty much maximum distance going back, you actually haven't picked up enough line off of the water to get a good hook set on that hook into the fish's mouth. And so you definitely wanna be careful for not having too much line on the water. And if you are, to make sure that you're mending the line so you can try and keep up with your bobber. And obviously the other way you can do it is by going out and setting it really long so you're dragging bottom. But I don't like doing that because if you end up setting your rig way too long, for one, you could lose your gear and then two, if there are fish in the area, you've got all this gear just dragging along the bottom and you could potentially push some fish away from the area. And so I really prefer going the top down technique until you find the bottom and then coming up just a little bit until you start seeing that proper action uh, in your bobber. Now, lastly, uh, we're gonna cover some scents because everybody always asks, should I use scent? And the, the general answer for fishing you guys is yes, use scent. Why would you not want to use scent? If you've got a uh, scent available, then I would definitely use it, whether you're using uh, something that's more of like this gel or if you're fishing jigs, uh, go with the water soluble. But this Procure gel stuff right here works great. Uh, Procure has a ton of products out there, and a ton of different scents and things like that. So I'm, I'm sure most of you guys that are local around here have seen these guys out there. And again, it's a great product and uh, I've, you know, for years been fishing this uh, this style from Procure. So that's gonna do it, you guys. I hope you guys learned something from this super long video, probably one of the longest videos uh, I've actually made. Um, I'm gonna try and put some links in the description uh, below this video for some of these products that are out here and maybe make it easier for some of you guys that uh, don't have a, a fishing store close to you or you're out of the area and uh, actually don't have some of these products uh, available to you. So again, thanks for watching you guys. Again, I really hope you guys learned something. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. We've got a bunch of videos that are going to be coming down the pipe, uh, specifically in preparation for winter steelhead. So a bunch more bobber stuff coming up and all just some other techniques that will hopefully get some of you guys that are new or have yet to uh, catch a steelhead, uh, maybe some some good info to be able to help you do so and just some ideas of some different techniques that might land you a fish and uh, may become your very favorite technique. So best of luck to all you guys and I hope to see you out on the water.